Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to make a card using vellum and a jumbo peony stamp from Stampendous. I hope you'll stay tuned. So we're starting out, I would have shown you the stamp, but it's already in the in the uh, Misty. It's called a Jumbo Peony and it's by Stampendous. And it also comes with this swirl. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use the swirl or not, but it's there. And I have some other sentiments, things like that, that I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna stamp it on vellum. I've already practiced a little bit because my stamp didn't wanna stay in my, um, it didn't wanna stay on the door of my Misty. So I had to put some, uh, glue stick on there on the back of it to keep it in place. If you don't have a stamping tool like a Misty, you can always stamp it like this. You would lay it on your table, it face up like this, ink it, and then put your paper on it and, and uh, rub it that way. That's the easiest way, if I can give you a little advice. Okay, so here is my vellum that I've cut to five by seven. I also have a card base that's 10 inches wide and seven inches tall. It's scored at five inches, so it's it will fold to a five by seven card. And I'm gonna put some of that um, pouch of cornstarch or baby powder on this so that when I use my embossing powder, it doesn't clump up or leave a lot of residue behind. And it also will take off any fingerprints, things like that. And then I'm going to, once I make sure it's in the corner, I'm going to put my magnet on that. I'm going to use Gina K's Amalgam Ink on it because it stays wet a little bit longer, I think. I'm not sure. This is the third time I've tried this because the other two times my peony fell off onto my vellum. Let me just say, I wasn't really, really tickled about that. Okay. I, the reason I'm doing it in the Misty is because I would want to oftentimes uh, stamp it more than once to ensure we get a really good image on our vellum. I'm using the old elbow trick and sometimes I use my feet to rub over it. I just want to make sure that the ink transfers to the vellum really well and the best way to do it is to just keep rubbing over it. Now see how the center I didn't do really well? That's because I'm not good at uh, really putting pressure on the center. And that's why I sometimes rub my foot across it. I don't recommend you doing that because I don't want you to break your tool. And um, I've practiced this enough that I, I kind of have the system down. Okay, I'm gonna put my elbow in the middle of it. That's another thing you can do. I don't think your elbow will destroy it, but okay, we're gonna go with that. I'm going to take it out of the Misty, and I have this container, it's a Ziploc container that I use for my clear embossing powder, and then I have one of these um, cups that you get, you put like corn, yeah, corn, cold medicine in, or corn medicine, I don't know. Oh, these are the issues I have, I'm just saying. And you just want to make sure that you cover your whole design. The thing that's tricky about this is heat setting vellum because it will melt really, really quickly. So you have to be very careful when you do this. Okay. And I think it looks pretty darn good. I could not be happier. Now, there are a couple little uh, spots of the clear embossing powder on the front of this. I'm not going to fret about that because I'm coloring the back of my image, not the front. So those little drips that kind of look like, I don't know if you can see them right there. Can you see that? And then there's one up there. Um, those are not going to show up. Um, well, they're going to show up, but they're not going to change the way we feel about our little project. I just bought a new set of alcohol markers that were on sale at Christmas time because you know me, I just love to buy myself presents. So I bought myself this uh, Blick from DickBlick.com, the Illustrator markers, and they have a brush and a chisel tip, and I thought they were really pretty. And I think I'm going to go with the amethyst, the plum, 
Maybe the blush is my latest color. I don't know. Maybe the periwinkle. I don't know. We'll just play with it and see what we get. Okay, these are the colors I'm going to go with for my peony. I uh, used to have peonies in my old house, and they were um, pretty fierce, fiercely colored, like very bright. And um, so the blush probably isn't going to work, but these other two I think will. You want to make sure that your image is nice and cool, and you're going to flip it over. You want darker colors when you do this because if you use lighter colors, you're not going to see them very well. So our goal here is to get, I'm going to start with my lightest color, which is Periwinkle. And I'm going to start coloring in with that. You won't um, have a problem with... Um, this being um, like getting outside the lines because you won't see anything that's on the lines when you flip it over. If you go over this more than once, you'll get a darker color. So the more times you go over it, see how purple it is now, the darker it gets. So I'm gonna color I'm gonna color um, this side. In the end, I guess it's my right side. I'm going to also, I think, put a piece of paper under this so you can see it better. I'm going to get a piece of paper so that you can see it, hopefully. Okay. Then I'm going to go in with the amethyst and do a little bit more. And this time I'm just going to kind of go around the edges like this and leave it in the middle so you can still see the middle do some lines some shading I guess with this color and it is plum I think I'm gonna do the middle of some of these with this plum going to do the darker colors. The other color I think was too light and I was trying to go with darker colors but these colors don't seem to be as dark as I want them to be so I'm going to go with this and then I'm going to go back over it with the other colors with that more purpley color. And then I'm going to have Rich fast forward this because since it's all one flower, everything on the flower is going to be the same. It's not like, you know, it's not like it's going to be different colors. It's going to just be these two or three colors. Let me grab a couple other markers here and see if we can find one that works. So what I did is I got some of my Touch 5 markers that are really dark, or my darker ones, and I went with these three that are going to be my highlighting colors, and that would be 73, 81, and 82. Light Violet, Deep Violet, and Ultramarine. Those are the three. These two look almost identical to me, but I'm not really good at that. And this one, I don't know if this is going to be dark enough, but we're going to give this one a try first.
Okay, let's turn it over. What I want to do next is I'm going to take a little bit of either alcohol or um, hand sanitizer. Either one will work. And all I'm using is just your basic um, uh, Dollar Tree hand sanitizer. And I got it on my little rag here, and I'm just going to pounce it on the back of this. And my goal here is to just to take off some of the excess um, alcohol marker. And I want to make sure that I don't go outside the lines. I want to make sure that I, if I can, let's see, I already went outside the line. Yikes. I just want to use enough of this that I can just kind of get a little bit of a gradient of color in here. Mm, that's not bad. I'm going to go in with the, with the pink tones now. I'm going to go with this one, which is Plum. I'm going to go into this center section and see if we can get just a little bit of change of color. That's better. The goal here is to make it so that you can see different colors in here. And if you just go over the other areas. Sometimes you get, you can see it, sometimes you can't. So we're just going to play with it a little bit and see if we can get some of the pinks to show through the purples. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Here is my hand sanitizer and I'm going to put it on move that off to the side. I'm just going to put some on a foam brush because I want to be able to take up some of the purple and pinks, but I want to kind of move the color around a little too. And I think if I if I use a brush, I'll have better a better chance of doing that, of getting it to go where I want it to go. I want it to look almost like marble, if that makes sense. Now, okay, I'm going to put this on my piece of paper and see if I can pick it back up. There we go. And I'm going to just wipe the color around a little bit. Let me see if I can dry it off with my heat tool. Okay. I think it's pretty good. I do have another couple spots here that I want to try and see if I can, like right there I have some ink, alcohol ink. I'm wiping it off. I don't know if you can see it comes off really nicely when you use your um, hand sanitizer. Okay. That's pretty good. I like the looks of it. It looks pretty good. Alright, so let's get our card together. So at this point, I had to cut my card base down because I didn't have any dies that were big enough to cut a frame that was five by seven. So in the end, my card is about four and three quarters across by about five and seven eighths inch tall. And I might still have to cut it down a little bit because I cut it bigger 
then I needed it because my uh, edges weren't straight to begin with. You know how that sometimes goes with me. And I'm going to fold it like this because I have some weird um, marks on the front. I don't know if you can see those weird marks. They were in the inside, but now I'm going to put them on the outside. And then I'm going to trim off um, one of these edges, this edge, because it's a little bit crooked and I don't want it to be bigger than my frame. I don't know if you can see the difference, but my frame is about, I'd say, an eighth of an inch too big. So we just need to slice that little bit off. And hopefully it'll slice off okay without any major catastrophe. <clears throat> but as you know with me, it could, it could still have a catastrophe or two. So my plan here is I need to put something on the front that's going to make this a little bit more interesting. See, I'm going to have this on the front like that. I'm going to have to cut it down as well. I didn't want to cut it down until I glued it where I want it to be, and then I'm just going to cut it with scissors because it's going to be hidden. The edges are going to be hidden with the, with the um, frame. So I think our first step is going to be to glue this bad boy. And I have a couple kinds of glues that I thought I would play with. I also got some of these nail art, and I thought I would glue some of these in place. I'm going to use my diamond tools to glue those down. I don't know if you've ever, if you didn't see my diamond painting video, I, um, you, you use these with, they have some wax in the tip, and you just kind of pick up your, things and put them down with those. So that's what we're going to be doing. First step though is to center our um, peony and glue it down. And I'm using, right now I'm going to use this um, Tonic Essentials double-ended glue pen and I'm only going to put glue on the flower. This is important if you're doing anything with vellum because vellum doesn't like to be glued down and so it shows the glue. So we're going to put just little dollops of glue here and there hoping that we can get this glued down without having everything show, you know, the glue. And um, that's my plan anyway. I'm putting a little bit here and there and hoping little drop there, a little drop there, a little bit here. Okay. So then we're just going to center it. I'm going to put it down a little bit. Uh, maybe like that. I'm going to go with it like this, I think. And I'm going to hold this in place. Now we can go around the outer edge and put glue on it because don't forget we're going to have a frame there. So right now I'm just going to hold this for a second to make sure that our glue is holding. And then once our glue is held, then we can go on to gluing down the edges. And the reason that we can glue the edges, again, is because we're going to have this lovely frame that's going to hold it in place. And so we'll be able to hide it with that. It's a good deal whenever you can hide something like this. I'm going to put a little bit, just, I'm running a little line of glue on the very edge just to make sure, I'll hold it down, just to make sure that our frame is held and that our vellum doesn't pick up and look crazy because, you know, it can happen. That's happened to me before where some things look crazy. No, you know that never happened. Everything I've done is perfect. Sure, we'll go with that line. And before I glue down our frame, I'm going to trim off the excess of our um, vellum. And I'm going to use my um, Stampin' Up snips. I think that's what they're called to do that. I really like these as far as scissors go. I made a video on my favorite scissors and um, I can link that here 
you know I don't make any, uh, I'm not monetized at all. And that means I don't make any money from YouTube. I don't make any money from products you buy. If I say this is a good product and you buy it, I don't make any money from that. I just like to tell you that because I want you to be able to trust when I tell you I like something that I really like it. And it's not because I'm getting paid to say I like something. If I don't like it, you'll be the first to know because I like to make sure I always give you the straight poop on everything. Okay, almost got this trimmed out. Then we're going to go right from here to putting our frame on it, I think. I don't know if I'm going to put my frame up on uh, dimensionals to give it a little bit more um, uh, a little bit more dimension, but I want to make sure that it has some kind of interest to it. It does have some stitching in it, and that does make it kind of cool, but I want it to have, I don't know, maybe a little bit more interest than that. So this is what it's going to look like. Well, it's not what it's going to look like because I'm going to be doing those little beads and I need to stamp my sentiment and here I'm going to use these are from Hero Arts and I thought they were cool I got them at a garage sale I think and um, I just liked that they were small and I could you know just stamp right on there I think I'm going to put this on the inside instead of on the outside and I'm going to use a dye based ink I was going to use a distress oxide ink but then I started thinking about how long it takes for it to dry and I thought I don't really want to do that you know I'm oh, I just can't make up my mind about most things well I'm not sure my camera cut out I'm not sure when it cut out but um, if you miss this I glued some of these nail art pieces all over some of the clear ones I glued where the stamen would be I need to glue a couple more in that section and I've been using this little tool that you get with diamond paintings. And it does a nice job of picking things up. You also get these little trays when you do diamond paintings. I'm just, you know, telling you some things. I have a few of them glued to my paper here because I keep getting them stuck where I don't want them. Put in there. And then I'm going to push it up under there so you can kind of not see that it's it's not at the end of the little black line. And I could put something here, but I like that look, that marbly look that you get from both um, the way that I use the, the um, uh, hand sanitizer. That technique is kind of cool. It, if you haven't ever tried anything like that, it's fun and you end up getting really interesting results. And then the glue is what made it look really marbleized. The hand sanitizer took the color off so that it's basically lighter than the rest of the flower, but the marbling look came from the glue. And let's see... I thought about putting something else on here, maybe some um, Wink of Stella, but I don't know if that'll really make me happy or not. But I do have these Wink of Stella markers, and one of them is purple, and that might, it might be fun. I don't know. We'll give it a try. I got these on Amazon in a set, and I think there's... 12 of them. They weren't that expensive, but I really, and I really like them because it's all different kinds of, you know, Wink of Stella, which is, Wink of Stella is just a um, kind of a pearlized, it, it, I don't know, it's, it's like a luminescent look. And when you get these markers, if you've never bought them before, you have, each one will have this little plastic ring on them and then you want to take it off and you want to put your marker together you have to shake it really well because it has a lot of very fine glitter we'll call it I don't know if it's really glitter but we'll call it glitter so you have to do this a lot to get them moving and then after you do that you want to take off the lid and you want to squeeze 
the sides of it so that you start to get the ink flowing and you're not going to see it for a second but in a little bit Ooh, got a big gob that just came out that sometimes happens to me where I don't get anything out and then all of a sudden I get a big blob so this will make my um, flower really really fluorescent like I uh, glittery we'll call it and I'm just going to put some of this on the tips of my leaves of my peony and we'll see what we get from doing that we're going for a bunch of different techniques today to see what vellum does with different mediums and different ideas. Okay, I'm going to let it dry and then we'll we'll make an envelope that will fit it because you know you want to make sure your envelope fits your card fits in your envelope. Jeez, not making any sense today. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to make the envelope next and when I come back we'll take a look at it see what we think. So I took a die that was for hello and I put it up on some dimensional foam and put that on there and then I made my envelope out of some purple paper and added some washi tape that's a little bit bolder but I still liked it. I hope you enjoyed this that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that and thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.